Next patron question is from Gaijin American. He's asking, what are your thoughts on the land back movement for the indigenous peoples of North America? So this is actually interesting. Um, when way back when I was Antifa, um, I was like hardcore land back. Like I wanted the like the idea, like I wanted America as a nation to be abolished. I wanted the idea of America to be abolished, like borders abolished, police abolished, just like abolished all the way down. <laughs> um, and so I was, um, I was supported the land back movement. And then I started to think critically about my positions and the type of land back movement that I was exposed to I think is um, a bad idea. And upon examination, what I was exposed to is basically woke ethno-nationalism. Because, so I know that there are better arguments for land back. And I know that there are different things that other people mean when they say land back. So I need to do more research on a, the, better, more steel manned version of land back because I was only exposed to Do you want to like, explain people they, what this is? Like what land back even is? Like So know. what I was exposed to was the belief that all indigenous land should which would basically be like all of America should be returned to indigenous stewardship. Right? Particularly in do indigenous matriarchal stewardship. But then I was thinking about it and, um, you know, like, there's a sympathetic part of me that's like, okay, yes, this land was stolen from these people. But then there's the other part of me that goes, well, actually, wait, why should the land be designated to people on the basis of, of their ethnicity? That doesn't sit right with me either. That's not something I value or necessarily, like, believe in. Um, but like I said, that's not the best way of framing that argument there are better arguments that are more practical for land back than that um but what i just said i i don't support because i because then it gets into the question of okay how do we decide who is native enough to get the rights to this stewardship right and then that gets into really difficult uncomfortable and i think not so helpful territories um like blood quantum stuff. Like, I don't think that's a good direction to go in. Um, and I've heard a, a better argument that is for land back, which would be that the U.S. has to go back and actually honor the treaties that were broken for the Native peoples in various tribes in different areas. Um, and that sounds a lot more practical I mean, it, it, these things are so difficult to actually execute nowadays. That doesn't mean that they're not worth trying. But in terms of it just being something that I could conceptually appreciate or get on board with more, that sits more right with me than just like, oh, if you're part of this ethnicity, you get to control the land. Like, that doesn't sound good to me at all. What are your thoughts? All right, so... Okay, so we have some, you know, r radicals from this position and they take positions, but so I'm going to do the steel man of the best positions, right? Like, the, the, you know, there are some people that think like all Americans should, should just, or Can Americans or Canadians should just leave the land and just let the indigenous people just, you know, I don't know where would they go. I don't know, you know. <laughs> where like they have no the people have been born in the United States and Canada that had nothing to do with the crimes committed against the indigenous people. They want them to all just give up their homes. I mean, I mean that is a very radical position. I'm not saying all of them think that. Um, I mean, if that was the if anybody had that form of reasoning, you know, every single Arab would have to go back to Saudi Arabia. Like there's not enough room for all the Arabs in the world in Saudi Arabia. Like you could be like, oh, you came and took these lands. Arab, like based on that same logic, um, all the Arabs in Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Egypt, they can't, you know, they can't hold the lands that they hold, and they should just all be in the Hejaz, right? Like that makes absolutely no sense. Like that's not. This is what the problem with like coming up with moral standards based on. 
uh, principles rather than consequences, right? So what you want to do is come up with solutions that makes the higher highest number of people better off rather than be like, well, these are the same people that lo- these lands were taken from them, so we need to give these lands back to them. First of all, they are not the same people, right? The, the, you know, again, this is tribalism, just because the sins of the father is not the sins of the son. This is a very biblical way of looking at things, right? Uh, if somebody wronged your um, ancestors, didn't wrong you, haven't been wronged, unless you think about multi generational poverty, which is a thing. And I do think they need to be compensated for that, right? Um, so, <clears throat> you know, like it's, it's the same thing with Israel and Palestine, right? The people, you know, the Palestinian, like whatever Israelis and Palestinians did before with each other, the Israelis and Palestinians that are being born there, they 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 were not responsible for the wrongdoings of their of their parents or their you know or, or the family. Like even within one generation, even like some people are like okay, well. You know, the situation with the Arabs, that was like hundreds of years ago. But when it comes to the uh, land back in the United States or Canada, uh, this was recent history, right? But to me, it doesn't, but that does that shouldn't really matter if it was re- recent history. As, as soon as you one generation has passed, you are not responsible for whatever your, your father did. It doesn't have to be your ancestors. It, it could be just your father and mother. Like as just one generation, you're not responsible. This is collectivism. Just like, oh, you, well, the, the Europeans took these lands. Well, like just because you're European, like Susanna is European, right? You know, she didn't do it. It wasn't her. This is when you think like when you're tribal <laughs> and you just like blame Susanna for things that she's not responsible for, right? Um, yeah, and like uh, Dali is here, right? I'm Persian. We took uh, like, Ancient history, we took over Egypt. Is Dali going to be angry with me? Because, like, I say we, like, when I say we, as if, like, it was us, like, it was me. Like, it's <laughs> so, so, like collectivism is, like, so stupid. Like, you're, like, you act like you refer, you refer to people, like, we, us, them. Like, you, when you say them, as in Europeans, you're including Susanna. Like, why would, like, this is guilt by association. It, has, it makes absolutely no sense. However, okay, so that's the dumb argument, okay? Um, okay, Dolly, Dolly is forgiving me. Dolly is saying, no, it's okay. She said that I love you. Thank you, Dolly, for forgiving me. Um, <laughs> so, so it's like, no, You're no, it's absolved. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dolly. Um, no, but okay, so he, that, that's a, so that's a ridiculous argument that people make, but let's make it, let, let me do the Steelman version, okay? So the Steelman version is that um, about is that these are recent treaties, okay, that were violated, okay? And even if you want to be a consequence, consequential, consequential, at least, how am I saying? Um, consequentialist, okay, that, that kind of, uh, rather than based on principle, um, you have to understand that a nation that doesn't um, uphold its treaties, that sets a bad precedent because the harm, the harm coming from that, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not just based on principles because you should do this because it's a principle, okay? It's also because the consequences of a country not upholding the treaties that it has signed with a certain group of people, um, it just makes it, makes, it, makes it the identity of that nation more dark. Like, if, you want, if you're saying that was the past and this is the present, well, one way to make it just the past and not the present is to fix the harm that was caused by violations of treaties or human rights or whatever you have done, right? Like, this is how you move on, right? You can't just be like, oh, that was just a past. Like, when you were talking about a nation, because it's, it's, the nation is still that entity, it does make sense for it to get involved in, especially given that, yes, that was the past, but multi-generational poverty is a thing. Like, indigenous people today are paying the cost of some uh, some actions that were making made before, even though they were not alive for it. And the people, um, there are people in America and Canada today that are benefiting for the harm that was done to the ind- indigenous people today. So the harm is still present, and the benefits are still present. And it and for being a, for becoming a nation that addresses its history, it, its dark parts of its history. And for it, beco- for it to become a symbol, like this is just based on consequences. Um, if you are a nation that you are doesn't wash that away and goes, makes efforts to undo the harm, 
it does have positive consequences for you both internationally and internally, right? So even based on consequences, it makes sense. However, if you want to address that, it makes absolutely no sense for the children of previous generations who had nothing to do with the harm for the crimes to give up their homes. Okay. Like that's not going to maximize the best outcome for the highest number of people. If you're ignoring everyone's tribes and everyone's ethnicity and just trying to maximize happiness, that's not going to, that's going to make a lot of people homeless, right? That doesn't make any sense. The best way you can do instead of holding people based on their ethnicity responsible, hold the same entity that was present there and today responsible, which is the nation and get the nation to compensate the, the people based on the harm, right? Or and again, specific you, governmental departments that are still functioning today. Yeah, yeah. And you could and you could measure the harm rather than measuring it based on ethnicity, you could measure it based on um, class. Uh, it's easier and it makes more sense. Like, I don't want to like it is the harm from a government being irresponsible for uh, identifying how uh, how much racially how racially pure you are when it comes to being indigenous or not that is like horrible that's a horrible precedent to set like that's not gonna that's not gonna make things better that's gonna make things worse right so the best way to do that is just to associate based on financial costs and loss of opportunity monetarily identifying that is both easier and also it doesn't same uh, set, set a bad precedent where the government is now all of a sudden responsible in identifying who's racially pure and who's not racially pure. Um, so that's what I think. Yeah. Cool. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.